Direct Connection is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. Live from Maryland Public Television, this is Direct Connection with Jeff Salkin. Hi everybody and thanks for tuning in for Direct Connection. We begin tonight with the creepy crawly news that our region is number one in bed bug infestations. Tonight, we connect you with expert advice on protecting your home. Joining us is Michael Raup, professor in the Department of Entomology at the University of Maryland. Professor, great to see you again. Jeff, it's always a pleasure to be here, even under bed bug circumstances. And you have brought bed bugs to our studio, which we can sort of kind of say thank you for. Well, we'll, we'll get into those, but <laughs> let, let's start with. Sure. This bug, why, why does it exist? What does it do? Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, we believe these bed bugs actually evolved on bats. And when we were sharing caves uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago with bats, a part of that clan actually moved over, decided we were pretty good meat, and then they began to travel around with us. So we think that the human bed bug actually evolved probably from a bat feeding bug first. It wasn't that long ago that bed bugs, obviously they weren't extinct, but you didn't hear much, and then it took off. I don't know if it's been a decade, a little bit more, but why, what happened? Absolutely, what happened, Jeff, is back in the day, as my kids say, we used broad spectrum insecticides in places like apartments and uh, elderly care homes, all kinds of housing facilities, things like DDT, to control cockroaches and ants. And what we found is these were actually suppressing bed bug populations. But we moved away from those things. We began to use a class of compounds called the synthetic pyrethroids. What we've now learned is that bed bugs are highly resistant to these synthetic pyrethroids, so they're no longer doing the job. For things like cockroaches and ants, we now use baits rather than broad spectrum. That's number one. Number two, in the past two decades, there's been a real kickoff in international travel. So we have people visiting places where bed bugs are frankly common. When they come home, these guys are really good stowaways and hitchhikers. Now you've got a bed bug infestation. Number three, we think, it's basically people use a lot more secondhand furniture, secondhand clothing. When you bring items into your house, if they're coming from an apartment complex or somewhere else that have been infested with best bed bugs, guess what? You've brought bed bugs into your home. So right. those are the big three, we think. Let's look at these critters that, that you brought in a uh Petri dish, is that the is that Absolutely. The and, and it's taped uh, all the way around with- Hannibal the, Lecter looks couldn't like, get out of this thing, Jeff. <laughs> we got like the, the those babies in there. Cheapest cellophane, <laughs> cellophane tape you have. I, I hope it holds. But say one of those guys got loose. Sure. What would it do? Would it go hide somewhere? Would it, it would probably go hide somewhere. It would find a dark spot, maybe under this piece of paper, maybe under the table. But at night, these guys are like little vampires. When the lights go down, they're going to become active. They will seek out a warm-blooded animal, me, you, a pet. Uh, they can feed on many, many different hosts. They're going to plug in in somewhere between about three and seven minutes. They're going to suck blood. That's what they do. They're going to quadruple, maybe tenfold their body weight. It's going to be like me drinking a 600-pound milkshake in the span of about seven minutes. Wow. Yep. And uh, after that, that blood will help them grow. For the mature bed bugs, they're going to use that to produce eggs. The female will use it to produce her eggs. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about bed bugs, how to avoid them, how to kill them, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. You can also tweet your questions our Twitter address is at MPT News. Now, they're not moving around that much. Well, there's one of them on the edge. Um, Do they spread disease or what, what's, why do we hate them so much? Well, we hate them because we hate anything that sucks our blood at nighttime. Jeff, let's get <laughs> That's honest unpopular, here. unpopular, yes. It's <laughs> unpopular. It's not the right thing to do. They're smelly. They're often associated with things like poverty and squalid living conditions, but they'll, they'll show up everywhere, even in high-end hotels, in theaters. So it's not really a socioeconomic issue here. 
The good news is, as you pointed out, is they do not vector any human disease. There's no known disease that they carry, but some people can have very severe reactions to these things, Jeff. So this, is, this can be a health issue as well. Let's uh, take a phone call. Baltimore County, this is Jean. Jean, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi, I work in the school system, and there's all kinds of children, and I go to different schools all over the um, county. How can I protect myself, my hair, my pocketbook from bringing home a bed bug that students may bring in? How can we actually protect our classroom, our carpet area? Gene, yeah, that's the that's the question. Thank you, thank you very much, Gene. This is an excellent question. Number one, you need to have an educational program. In other words, we need to have our teachers on board, our administrators, our uh, maintenance people in that building. If we suspect there are bed bugs there. We can verify this. We can have a professional pest control operator. We've got wonderful pest control operators here in the state of Maryland. They can actually confirm or infirm that possibility there are bed bugs there. For you personally, uh, unless you know for a fact that you have children with bed bugs in that school, frankly, I don't think you, you have to be terribly concerned about this. If you do have children and you know you have an infestation, the types of things you're going to want to do is to keep your personal belongings isolated. You can put these in large Ziploc bags. That will prevent bed bugs from entering those things. If you have a suspicion that they're traveling home with you on clothing, and this is just a good rule of thumb, anytime you travel, you're going to take those garments, they're going to go straight into a dryer. Of course, only garments that can go into a dryer. You can put it on high heat for about 15 minutes, or you can put it on a medium setting for 20 to 30 minutes. Once that temperature reaches about 120, it's going to kill all life stages of bed bugs, including the eggs. So it's going to be vigilance on your part. Seal up your things. Make sure that you're not bringing them home with you. That's the most important thing. When you travel, and you were just in the Amazon, yep. you were telling me. When you check into a hotel, what, what do you do? The first thing I do is I toss it. I got to be honest with you. I'm going to pull back that bedspread. I'm going to look at the sheets. And what I'm looking for, if we can get a graphic of this, we can see the blood spots. In other words, these are the fecal deposits that bed bugs make when they feed. Going to look at your sheets. Pull back the sheet, lift up the mattress, inspect that bed. You're looking for shed skins. You're looking for the bed bugs themselves. And they're easy to see. You can see these on my blog, or you're looking for these little red spots. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my luggage. I am not going to put it into the drawers. I'm going to use that metal luggage stand. Put your suitcase on the luggage stand. These guys don't like to shinny up those shiny stainless steel poles. This is going to help isolate your luggage, prevent them from traveling home with you. If you wake up and you've got bites on your skin, and you're reasonably sure you've been attacked by bed bugs. And even if you're not, one of the other things you can do as soon as you get home, you're going to take those items that can go into the dryer. And again, you're going to dry those things. You don't have to wash them first straight into the dryer. Your luggage itself can be put in a portable heater. They manufacture these for basically raising that temperature. Or if it's summertime, as you said, you came home from a trip, you simply put that luggage in a black plastic bag, put it out on the driveway in full sun, and the temperature is going to get high enough over the course of the day to cook those little buggers inside. Are, are the bite marks distinctive? I mean, do you, do you know it wasn't, uh, I don't know what else would bite you, but, but do, you, do you know automatically you wake up in the morning, is it just one, is it 10, what do you see? Well, it depends on how many bed bugs you're sharing a bed with, number one. Oftentimes, mosquitoes will bite down around the ankles, lower on the body. Same thing with chiggers and things you might have picked up outside. Bed bugs are going to bite you anywhere in your body. They could be in your shoulders, on your arms, on your chest, your belly, your legs, your head, your neck. So these bites can appear anywhere. Some people will have a pretty strong reaction, Jeff. Uh, and that's pretty good evidence. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't react. I'm not a strong reactor. And what we've also found is that as you get older, elderly people have less of a reaction. And this becomes an important problem in senior care facilities because they're just not going to react as strongly as other people might. And this is a problem.
Let's take a call from Carroll County. This is Frank. Uh, Frank, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just checking to see what the um, situation would be with me. I, I work in a lot of apartments, and I've had issues with bed bugs in the past, um, but I'm trying to protect myself. How can I do that when I go into an apartment and know to protect myself? Yeah. I've heard where I can use bed bug spray around my ankles to my feet. Um, I'm typically not crawling on the floors, but I am doing maintenance in there, painting, um, repairing appliances, so on and so forth. Very good. Thank you, Frank. Frank, uh, I'll tell you, they ma actually make uh, clothing that you can put on. I know a number of the pest control operators will actually put on little booties that cover their uh, shoes, their footwear. You're going to strip those things off, get rid of them, put them in a plastic bag. Uh, I don't know how complicated it is. Certainly Tyvek suits or something like this are going to give you that added layer of protection, but you can actually buy clothing or foot footing covers that will help keep those bed bugs off your, your body. If you suspect you have been in an apartment with infestation, I would go that route of taking those clothes as soon as you get home, getting rid of those things, get them into the dryer. Same with your footwear. Try to heat those things up uh, so you're going to kill any bed bugs that you might have brought home. If you call an exterminator because you think you have them or, or you know you have them, um, what, what are they going to do? Given that you said some of their arsenal, the bed bugs have, have developed uh, a response and immunity to it. Well, the important thing is they're going to come in, they're going to localize that infestation, okay? It's pretty easy to control bed bugs in a single family home. The problem comes when we have multiple family dwellings. So let's start with the single family home. They're not going to come in, they're going to localize that infestation. You're going to have to work very carefully with your pest control operator. That's the guy, the technician is going to help you. He's got the tools, he's got the training, he's got the techniques to get rid of the bed bugs. Here's you with lots of questions. Here's your bed bug. What you're this going is a to brilliant chart. By what you? <laughs> this is what Ph. This is why they give us the PhDs, Jeff. That was the dissertation. Right there. <laughs> you're going to have to work with that pest control operator. You're going to reduce clutter. You're going to vacuum. You're going to get rid of the harborage where those bed bugs are hiding out. The real problem becomes when we have multiple family dwellings because now you've added a third piece to that puzzle. Now you have to get landlords and property owners to help cooperate in this mission. And that's going to involve not only treating the unit where we find the bed bugs, but very often we have to treat the adjacent units because these bed bugs will move through wall voids where plumbing and electrical goes through. We also know they'll go out of your apartment, down the hallway, and into the next apartment. So, so there's no uh, over the counter, you know, can of raid or whatever that. I can go spray along the baseboard. Well, I have, I have helped people on an individual basis get rid of their bed bug problems. Number one, you've got to deny bed bugs of food. That means in the places you sleep, your bed, you're going to isolate that bed. You're going to get it off the wall, make sure that no bed clothing touches the floor, and you can use these little gizmos. These are excluders. You put these under your bed legs, the bed bugs will move off of your bed at nighttime. They will come into this little vessel. They crawl out into the outer chamber and they can't get out. This will collect the bed bugs. Any bed bugs that were off your bed will try to move and climb up the legs and similarly get caught. So it, what, what's catching them? It's just it's just it's a smooth simply plastic? simply mechanical. It's smooth plastic, but it's coated with a powder that prevents them from being able to climb up. So once they're in, they stay in. Reduce the clutter. You're going to vacuum and clean like crazy, like you've never cleaned before. You're trying to remove eggs. You're going to seal off your unit from any other adjacent units with caulk. And you can actually go this alone. But my recommendation is that you call in one of the professionals. As I said, these guys know how to get rid of that problem. And I think that's going to be the best way to go. Let's go out to Baltimore City. This is uh, Carl. Carl, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good evening, sir. I, I, it was, this is very timely because I, I'm calling because I have a question regarding professional exterminators. Sure. Uh, I, I'm currently treating for bed bugs, and I paid for an exterminator to come out. But the problem is, is that exterminators could 
become pretty expensive. So my question is, is there anything that we can do as a homeowner outside of the recommendations you made about mm -hmm. the cups to go around the, the bottom that catches the bed bugs and other preventive measures that we can use? Very good, Carl, thank Lowe's you. The Home Depot. Best of luck, sir. Carl, this is a great question. Again, you've got to work with that pest control operator and understand it's not going to be done in one visit. It's going to take multiple visits. This is going to be a project that occurs over time. But listen to that pest control operator. Reduce that clutter as much as possible. You've got to get as much of that stuff out from under the bed, out of those closets, open up that space so his treatments can do their job. I think that's the most important thing. Another version of the, the, the bed leg uh, excluder, I think you call it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I saw somewhere that you could take tape and run it so the sticky side is out along the bed legs. Would that intercept him as it, well? It could, but uh, I, I, I know that these work very well. Uh, you, could, you could give it a shot, but these things are how relatively about, inexpensive, so I'm, I'm going to go the excluder route. How about the, the temperature thing? So, so we know the dryer will Absolutely, kill Absolutely, yeah. There's, there's some... Uh, professional treatment where they Absolutely. bake your house. They basically bake your house. What they're going to do is they're going to move in large heaters. They're going to elevate the temperature inside that house to that lethal temperature, hold it there for the correct period of time. That's going to kill the bed bugs. Okay, so yes, you can go thermal treatment hot. We find that is more effective than thermal treatment cold. There are also pest control operators who will actually bring in compounds that will freeze those bed bugs. But frankly, it, it seems to me that the warm thermal treatments are going to be more effective uh, than the cold. Sussex County, Delaware, this is Gina. Gina, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Gina, are you there? Going once, wait for the delay. Gina, can you hear me? All right, Gina, please we call lost back. Gina. Yeah. Um, what else is happening in bug world? How's your, your YouTube <laughs> channel, All Things Bugs? What's it All called? Things How's bug. it doing? Well, it's called Bug of the Week. Any browser you go to, www.bugoftheweek.com. Uh, we're over a million visits. Uh, it's being pretty widely used as a teaching aid uh, because th these are the stories about the natural history of bugs. We work our way through the growing season here, here in Maryland, and during the cold season, we're heading for the tropics. So right now, we'll be doing tropical bug stories. I also have a YouTube channel, YouTube Bug of the Week, and that one is viewed in more than 200 countries around the world and has had more than 300,000 visits in the past three years since it's been available. So I don't get it, but people seem to like bug stories, Jeff. You know, I mean, it's wonderful, and, and our topic gives the impression that perhaps you don't like these particular bugs, but otherwise you love bugs, and, and there's so much to talk about, and we're, we're learning more all the time. Yes, yeah, six million species. I got to say, Jeff, bugs have been very, very good to me. The, the ones that, that we could use fewer of, perhaps, stink bugs. Stink bugs. Has that tapered off a little bit? A little bit, yeah. What we've seen is a general decline in the population here in Maryland. On the other fronts, the western front, as it's moving its way across the country in places now like California and the Midwest, this is a major problem as it was, let's say, a decade ago for us. But what we found is that it seems to be a combination. Our weather really isn't that favorable. It gets a little too hot in Maryland for these stink bugs. I agree. Yeah. Number two is we found that many of the indigenous natural enemies, it's kind of like war in the world, remember? It was the tiniest of microbes that killed the alien. We found that some of our indigenous natural enemies have now switched over parasitic wasps, predatory bugs, moved over and are actually killing these stink bugs. So, Delightful. Go for us. Uh, back to the phones, Baltimore City. This is Barbara. Barbara, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Thank you. Sure. I'm just wondering if a hair dryer would do the same thing as the clothes dryer. To, like, run it along the bed or something? Well, does Bar a hair dryer Barbie, you, be enough? You, you no, actually, actually, on clothing or anything. No, Barbara, I, I don't think that would be as efficient. I think you're going to be much better off with your clothing garments that can go into that uh, dryer. I think that's your best bet. And you simply can't uh, remove them along the baseboards. Remember, in the daytime, they're going to hide behind the baseboards, electrical outlets, the headboard, pictures on the wall. 
I just don't think you can be efficient enough with a hair dryer barber to get in there and actually kill those bed bugs. There's stories about people lighting their houses on fire, trying something with alcohol. Oh gosh, to go after bed bugs. Don't go that route. Although my mother used to tell me a fantastic story when she was a child. They lived in apartment buildings with the old iron mattresses with the springs. When they would move into a new place, they would take that those mattress springs outside, soak them in kerosene, light them on fire to kill those bed bugs. Wow, old school. It was real let's old hope, school. Let's hope nobody takes your advice here. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, guys. How, how about the mattress covers, though? You, you see uh, these impervious covers, you can wrap your mattress. Absolutely. Another good step, if you're going to try to do a, a home remedy yourself, you're going to use these encasements that you put around your mattress and also your box spring. This is going to trap any bed bugs inside. They'll eventually starve to death. Uh, and it will also prevent infestation, help to remove the infestation. Those bug, bug, bed bugs simply will not have as many places to hide when you use the zip up encasements. But make sure they say that they're bed bug uh, encasements for the mattress and box spring. Mike Raup is a professor of entomology at the University of Maryland. Thank you for coming. Remember to take the bed bugs with you. I will. Just to Thank head you, tonight, Jeff. remembering Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We'll be right back. Got an unused vehicle going nowhere? Donate it to the one place that can take you any place. Visit mpt.org slash vehicles and support the programs you love on MPT. The MPT app puts our programs right at your fingertips so you can choose when to watch, what to watch, wherever you want to watch it. Download it now. What happens in Japan and Asia matters to me. With NHK World's Newsroom Tokyo, I get the news live from Japan right at the start of my day. New ideas come out of Asia all the time. NHK Newsline reports on business, technology, and world events from Tokyo to Bangkok. Once in the morning gives me a heads up on the competition. Every hour on the hour, the news I want from Asia. Watch NHK World now on Comcast Channel 268 and Verizon Channel 480. Are you turning 70 and a half this year? If so, you generally have to start spending down your retirement account. Even the minimum distribution can place you in a sticky situation. Luckily, you can now use your IRA to make tax-free gifts. Gifts up to $100,000 will never count as income, but always make a difference. That's icing on the cake. Make your gift for this year before December 31st. Visit mpt.org support. State officials are gathering right now in Annapolis to celebrate the Martin Luther King Day holiday, placing a wreath at a tree dedicated to Dr. King on the lawn of the Maryland State House. We spoke a short time ago with the chair of the Legislative Black Caucus, Delegate Cheryl Glenn. Delegate Glenn, thank you for being with us. Let's start with your thoughts on the King holiday this year. Well, thank you for having me, Jeff. I am very, very grateful uh, this year on Dr. King's birthday that I was given the approval to move forward. We had the hearing today, House Bill 2, which is the bill to create diversity in the medical cannabis industry in the state of Maryland. That bill was heard at 2 p.m. today in the Health and Government Operations Committee. On a holiday, uh, most of the uh, delegates and senators don't get to session. Uh, session starts at 8 p.m. on Mondays. And people would normally anticipate having Dr. King Day available for all sorts of other activities. But I thank the Health and Government Operations Committee and the chair and the speaker for ensuring that they came together on Dr. King's birthday to hear that bill, because it was a, a huge uh, symbolic gesture uh, to um, to have that bill hearing, and it is House Bill 2, which shows the commitment from the leadership to get that bill passed this year. Now, so, Glenn, mm -hmm. the um, event tonight is being held at the tree that's right by the, the Maryland State House. And, and if I remember right, it's not far from where the, the statue for Justice Tawney, the author of the Dred Scott decision, yes. used to be, and it's no longer there. Your thoughts on that? 
I am ecstatic that we get to celebrate Dr. King's birthday and we don't have to look at the Tawny statue. I mean, the, Maryland is really moving forward. So we have the only Dr. King Memorial Tree on any state grounds in operation in the entire country. And so this year, this will be the first Dr. King birthday celebration where the Tawny statue is not there. And I'm ecstatic. I'm very, very grateful uh, to the leadership of the House and the Senate, the entire Maryland General Assembly, who decided that it was time to remove that offensive statue, which said that people who look like me are less than human. Overall, what, what would you say is the state of Dr. King's dream here in 2018? I would say that we still have a long way to go, but I know if Dr. King could look upon us, see 50 members of the Legislative Black Caucus, 40 delegates and 10 senators elected in the Maryland General Assembly, that's progress. When we look at the fact that we have uh, um, African Americans serving at the highest level in our state, uh, that's progress. So even though we have a long way to go and we will continue our forward progress, but we have still come a very long way. And so I know that Dr. King would be very proud of the progress, progress that we've made, especially in the state of Maryland. Delegate Cheryl Glenn, thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up Thursday at this time on Your Money and Business, the psychology of money, a fresh look at how to avoid money mistakes. Join us for Your Money and Business Thursday at 7. Now for all of us at MPT, I'm Jeff Salkin. Thanks for watching and have a good night. This program was made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities.